At first glance, it's hard to think of anything more family-friendly than Tetris. But the truth is, this puzzle game has a dark past many people don't want you to know about. Tetris needs no introduction. It's one of the best-selling video game franchises of all time, and currently holds the world record for the most widely available title. In spite of being inescapable, few discuss the true story of how Tetris came to be though. The tale most recite is near folklore at this point, and does hold true for the most part. But as you'll soon discover, the devil is in the details. The account as most know it begins with a man named Alexei Pajitnov. Working as a software engineer under the Soviet Union, the tile matcher was conceived with the simple intent of testing newly released computers. However, it was so addictive that it quickly spread like wildfire across the country and later the world. Upon it blowing up, tense business negotiations started due to the nature of its creation. You see, having been invented under communism, this meant that the state officially owned all rights to the idea. And as a result, Alexei would see none of its profits until the Union's fall, at which point he founded the Tetris Company. Nowadays, this business maintains full rights to the block stacking game worldwide, and have long since made up for the estimated $40 million he missed out on before Gorbachev tore down the wall. This is no doubt a compelling story on its own, and in many ways was emblematic of a classic rags to riches narrative. The pro capitalism slant also did didn't hurt its spread either. However, it glosses over just how difficult that decade without royalties was. And on top of that, it also ignores that Alexei hadn't created Tetris by himself. And that's because although the software engineer Alexei eventually received his due reward, his since forgotten contributor wasn't so lucky, eventually leading to tragedy. But if there was another person behind the world's most popular puzzle game, why on earth would they try to hide him from the puzzle? Public. Well, this leads us into a very dark and untold chapter of Tetris history. We'll learn more about this after a brief word from our sponsor. Many young people are skeptical about using traditional financial institutions, and that's no surprise. Finances get more complex every single year, and people feel excluded and exploited by their bank. People just want a simple money solution that works for them, and that is where Current comes into play. This banking app, as well as the card that comes along with it, can be used entirely on your phone. So what makes Current different than the competition? Well, well, they keep it simple, authentic, and direct. There's no holding back and no hidden fees. They're investing in the tech that banks should have built a long time ago so that you can just live your life without worrying about the account. The app is entirely customizable with you being able to get paychecks early, spending insights, notifications, and points for cash back where you shop. So if you'd like a superior solution to your financial needs, click on the link down below and try out current for yourself. Vladimir Pokhilko was an academic and clinical psychologist prolific for his research into interactions between humans and technology. A close friend of the aforementioned Alexei, he is credited with convincing the programmer to follow through with the concept of Tetris and gave input throughout the development. He was also instrumental to the game's initial release, as well as credited as co-creator of the series in previous decades by certain publications. Upon the game's explosion in popularity overseas, friends Vladimir and Alexei were desperate to somehow monetarily benefit from its success. This was when they would receive the advice of a Dutch businessman named Hank Rogers. Instrumental in navigating the complex legal battle that was Tetris's rights, throughout the ordeal, Hank never forgot their unjust treatment. Befriending Alexei, he suggested that they do business in the United States and develop properties they would then fully own the rights to, and eventually they did just that. Traveling to San Francisco in 1991 to establish a development studio called Anima Tech. Throughout the following years, Alexei and Vladimir would continue working together as they attempted to create a second magnum opus. This even included an official sequel to Tetris called Weltris, which altered the game to occur in a three-dimensional space, as well as Wordtris, 
a falling block puzzle game where you had to spell out words. Unfortunately, their efforts received a mixed response. The company barely stayed afloat, as release after release found only moderate success at best. The saving grace for Alexi came just in time when in 1996 the rights to the original Tetris name reverted back to him, as he and his Dutch business partner Henk Rogers founded the Tetris company. Together they built Tetris into a brand, and to this very day their company retains a strong hold over the franchise. While Alexi began to finally receive the acclaim he deserved, his friend was left behind, as Vladimir remained at their other failing studio. Information on why Vladimir was not included in the Tetris company is not the easiest thing to dig up currently, but for whatever reason, as the two other men saw great financial wealth from the Tetris company, he was left in the cold. Remaining at Animatech, Vladimir's future seemed bleak as the increasing economic pressures began to weigh on him. Eventually, these challenges became insurmountable to overcome, as he may have thought his business was soon going to go belly up if no more money came in from clients. This situation could cause many good men to have a mental snap. But what Vladimir would soon do as he faced financial demise was unthinkable. It was an otherwise average Monday night in Silicon Valley on September 21st, 1998. But not for Vladimir, who decided to murder his wife and 12-year-old son while they were sleeping in their beds. He first bludgeoned them with a hammer, before stabbing them with an 8-inch hunting knife. He then deeply slashed his own throat, causing him to collapse next to his son's bed and passed away. The next day, a close friend of the family discovered the scene, to which they quickly alerted law enforcement. Upon their arrival, police found a note set upon the now deceased man's desk. It read, I've been eaten alive, Vladimir. Just remember that I am exist, the devil. A mix of mental illness and his business-related stresses appeared to push him past the point of no return. The saddest part is, just a week following the double homicide, the company Squaresoft showed up at Vladimir's office with a $200,000 check for their services. It should be stated again that this tragedy was not motivated solely by financial pressures with that potentially being just the straw that broke the camel's back, in an already unwell man. A professor of psychiatry at the Stanford Medical Center commented on the story that, business failure could make someone depressed and even suicidal, but not homicidal. Additionally, Hank Rogers claimed that while Animatech's economic situation was not the best, they were far from grave. He told reporters, We were in the middle of raising money. It was nothing out of the ordinary. Nothing that we couldn't see past the end of. Ultimately, we will likely never have a clear understanding of why Vladimir committed those horrific crimes, as Alexei and Hank have done their best to keep the story in the past and essentially remove the man from Tetris history. Regardless of their business dealings, the one thing clear to all parties is that Vladimir was a tormented individual, and so disconnected from reality that he felt as if he'd been eaten alive by Satan himself. So that pretty much wraps up everything that's publicly available about this case. And to give Alexei the benefit of the doubt, he probably doesn't talk about this because it's very traumatic for him. And with that thought, I think I'll end the video here. So until next time, thanks for watching.